and welcome back to devlog in the last part i worked um on the uh, ability to move left and right and in this part um Um, I'm going to add jumping and welcome back to devlog in the last part I worked another rope addition to the game to add another system involving ropes and in this part I work on the visual design for levels Firstly, let's go over how I actually worked on designing the level visuals. I made a lot of these visuals before I had even planned out the levels, yet I knew I wanted a lot of game levels to involve chapters, so I just made a bunch of general visual assets that you can see right now on the screen that would work in one specific chapter. The theming for this level is a forest that has a bunch of drunk items lying around, so that's why there's a bunch of pipes and also a bunch of trees. But my idea for a lot of these is to use a lot of these sprite shape systems, which I've discussed before when I was talking about level visuals. Remember that dev look? Wow, I like that dev look a lot. That was one of my favorites. To design a lot of the levels in the in the game. There's a pretty easy reason for this. It's pretty much the exact same reason why someone may use a tile set in a 2D game, which doesn't have as much curving surfaces. With sprite shapes, I can just make one sprite that can curve around to surfaces and is a lot easier than just designing a bunch of curving visuals. I can make one setup that I can stretch and create for a lot of level visuals. But a lot of the designs for these visuals, since I'm not particularly the best two-dimensional artist, in fact before this devlog I had really never drawn in 2D since perhaps six years, so I'm a little bit rusty on my drawing visuals. So my idea for a lot of these visuals was to just design a lot of things that I could layer on top of each other to add complexity to any visuals that I would need in a scene. For example, I have the trees and I have branches I can just layer on top of each tree, meaning I don't need to draw a bunch of different trees or a bunch of complex trees, I just need to draw a couple trees and then add branches as and when I need one for a visual scene. This also makes planning them in levels a lot easier. I can pretty much choose from a selection of sprites that I have drawn, sort them into place in my level blockouts where they make sense. My method of arranging sprites in scene, which is, as you can probably see, not finished yet, but the general idea I go for is I arrange a lot of the large items like the trees and the visuals we're going to be using for acrobatics, such as the ropes and rope lines for this level. Then the trees are a lot bigger, so they can encompass a lot of space. From there, I then add a base to the tree. This is what the tree is standing on, or resting along. So, floor surface, or a rocky surface, or something else. I then add a background to this rocky surface, such as the grass. Since I have a bunch of different sprite shapes, I kind of just layer them on top of each other, so I have a rocky surface, then usually what I will do is I will layer a grass sprite shape atop this, so it looks more varied, more unique, so it doesn't look like I'm repeating the same sprites over and over, which I absolutely am, but don't tell anybody. And then from this, I can use a another sprite, which I use for grass, to be in front of trees and make it look like it is blending in with the surface it is resting upon. And then I can just go through the rest of the levels and add more detailed sprites where I need them. For example, if the sprite doesn't encompass the entirety of a shape or doesn't look natural following the shape geometry of a level, I can cut off the sprite in a certain point and instead use a different set of sprites. For example, some branches or a pile of rocks or some logs stacked up that the player can platform instead, instead of the sprite shapes that they have. This is easier than just drawing an entire scene. I just arranged sprites. Now I know what you're saying. Hey Slug Glove, that's how 2D levels are made. Do you really think someone just draws the entirety of a game? I did actually think that for a while. I used to think that in 2D games, due to my ignorance, people would just draw out large sums of the levels and it wasn't just multiple sprites laid on top of each other. But I am happy with the system of sprites. 
It does definitely take me a long time to make levels visually, especially given how, lo how, how large a lot of these levels are. Having to arrange everything so it looks natural to me and also looks nice visually definitely takes a long time but I think it is certainly worth it. First of all, it's very relaxing to do. I know I enjoy a lot of the game development process, but just arranging sprites in a way that makes them look visually pretty, it's really fun. There's no complexity to it, aside from making sure everything blends together well, but actually arranging sprites, moving sprite shapes around, making sure everything looks visually similar and blends well with the hitboxes of areas is pretty fun to do. I've definitely enjoyed it a whole lot when making this process. Another thing I add is the visuals for hazards. These are very simple to add, and it's probably the easiest thing to add visually when, doing, when designing a level. The reason for this, and you may be able to tell yourself, is that the hazards are just giant piles of vines with spikes on them. So I just add a big old messy pile of vines, and I don't need to design anything with that. They can just be placed in the general shape of a hazard, and that's the easiest part to design for. One thing I like to add in these visual levels is a blurry out of focus foreground image. And this is an image that is in front of the player, so obscuring the actual level, is blurry out of focus and very dark and you can't tell what it is. The reason I like adding this is for a couple of reasons. The first is that it gives a sense of depth to levels, as in it's not just a flat plane, there's actually things in front and behind you. The second reason is that I don't have to draw these very well because it's blurry and out of focus so it can look like anything. It's really easy to add. I'm pretty happy with how the visuals make a level look more complete. Testing out levels in a debug mode, as I mentioned in two devlogs ago. I find it to be very satisfying and fun because I like how great cubes look, but actually playing through a level that has a visual style to it and uses sprites and is designed interestingly, it isn't just a bunch of cubes, is definitely more satisfying, I think. It makes the levels play a lot better and definitely makes testing these levels a lot more enjoyable. It also makes me feel like I've actually finished one level of the game. That's one level down, 64 more to go. Wait a second. I meant for that to be a comedic exaggeration, but there may actually be 64 levels in this game. Oh no, it's taken me a long time to make this one level. How long is it going to take me to make 64 levels? Oh no. The same way I think adding a character and animations to a character controller can definitely give a better impression of how the game is going to play, in opposed to just watching a capsule moving around a game, I think having the player run along a scene that has actual visuals and a design to it, in opposed to square cubes, really gives a better idea of how the game is going to play, as well as the first point. And also, I like how trees look, and being able to look at trees while testing my level makes me happy. One thing you may have been able to note throughout this devlog is there are a bunch of green owls in the level that do not match the rest of the art style of the game. No, not in the same way that Pet Pal doesn't match the rest of the art style of the game, and not in the same way that the barrels don't match the rest of the art style of the game, but in a different way that doesn't match the art style of the rest of the game. And the reason for this is that these are collectibles, but I haven't programmed collectibles yet, so these are just dirt assets with a sprite on them, because I cannot for the life of me fathom what a collectible in this game should be. It should either be money, it should be some kind of funny creature, or it should be Bones. All of which I feel would fit Pet Pal as a character. She would take the money, she would eat the funny creatures, she would eat the bones, and I'm just not sure which one fits most to add as a collectible. I also don't need to add collectibles and coding yet, so I just haven't done it. But I need a placeholder to put as a prefab for when collectibles are added, so because of this, there is a bunch of green owls in the level as collectibles. 
Can you find all funny green owls in this video? Leave a comment with the timestamp of every single green owl and you will win one pet pal coin. They made out of mud. They break instantly. They give a toxic disease to one's skin if put in contact with it. And you get one of them. And that's it for devlog. I don't have a whole lot to say about this, other than that I've really enjoyed working on the levels visually. I've also enjoyed actually having a use for all those sprites I drew. I know I enjoy drawing a lot of the sprites, but just having a bunch of them in a folder as a placeholder for when I will eventually add visuals to my game is a little disheartening because I sometimes worry that a lot of the things that I have drawn will never actually be able to be used in game. And I know that I like making a bunch of work and destroying it, but not my trees that I have drawn. I don't want to destroy my trees. So I'm glad to actually see the artwork that I have made, used in game, and I think fit quite well. What did you think of the style of the game in the comments below? Do you think I should redraw everything in a toon style? Because I thought about it. I thought about doing that. Long and hard into the night. Boy howdy, what if I just redrawed 168 sprites? That could be several weeks of devlogs. All about redrawing in the cartoon style. Wouldn't that be swell? Thank you.